I wanted to thank all of you for your input, your help on the live stream. I've been able to partake of that as I've had to stay home and miss the meetings here. Um, but being able to listen to that, I found out that Brother Tony and I's thoughts have been kind of joined here. He mentioned this morning his thoughts on plowing. And that's what I wanted to speak about tonight with our introduction is plowing. Um, plowing involves breaking up hard ground, maybe ground that's been dried out or hardened by the sun, by inactivity, different things like that can attribute to that. But it's soil that won't allow penetration and that doesn't allow for anything to spring up from it. So plowing is to break up that fallow ground, that hard ground. But it also has to do with turning of the soil, it's kind of bring up things that are down underneath the surface, bringing them up to where they can be seen and, and handled again. So what I want to consider tonight is that a person plows where he intends to spend time and make an investment. There is an intention in this action that will require labor from seed time all the way through to harvest. So when you begin plowing, it's an investment. You're, you're going to spend some time there. Now first, initially, there is the plowing where you break up the hard clods, like we were speaking about the, the clods of earth that would hinder growth. In um, a certain area, there may not be any productivity because of the hardness of the ground, and you want to plant something there, but you have to plow up that fallow ground before any of your labors further will be productive. Now, a lot of the time, this is spurred by the fact that we have precious seed. We've been given something that we want to see the increase of, and we don't want to just plant that anywhere. We want to have a fertile ground that is conducive to the life of that seed. So we want to take time to prepare the ground where we're going to plant that. Hosea 10, um, the second part of verse 11 and 12, the Lord says, I will make Ephraim to ride and Judah shall plow and Jacob shall break up his clods. Sow to yourself in righteousness, reap in mercy. That's why this plowing was taking place so that you could sow to yourselves in righteousness. So we want to make a fertile place for the precious seed that we've been given to increase and to bear fruit. But secondly, that's not the only time that plowing is in order. Plowing is also a continual labor. Even after the ground has begun to bear fruit, it's already being productive, we want to continue to plow in that so that it will encourage continual produce. Now this type of plowing isn't going to be the same as the first. It's not as aggressive as the first sort of plowing. We do it with more carefulness to cultivate and maintain the growth that's already taking place there in that area. What we're doing is cultivating to ensure that it remains a favorable place for growth and for increase. Like the man in the parable that Jesus told, he said, let me dig about it and dung it. So this is that type of plowing, is to dig around something, making sure that it has room to spread and to increase and to make that place a favorable place. Um, Jesus' words also, I wanted to mention, he alludes to the fact that when we have gotten to the point of plowing, we have made a commitment. In Luke 9, 62, Jesus said unto him, no man having put his hand to the plow, there's the beginning of it, he's going to plow, and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. So here the point of plowing is your commitment to see that through. You think of a farmer that plows a field. It's because he has an intention to bring something from that labor. So it's a commitment until he sees that to finish. Now, when we think of plowing in the scripture, plowing in that time, we remember that they had to have additional help in plowing. The, the men that gave themselves to this labor in the fields, they had to have help. They employed the beasts. They had oxen, yoke of oxen. I remember that Elisha, he was found with 12 yoke of oxen. So he had a lot of help in plowing this here. But we also have one who is stronger than us, who's helping us in this labor of plowing. And that is the Lord himself. And it, Matthew 11, verses 28 29 and 30, these are very familiar passages, but Jesus says, take my yoke upon you. That was the yoke that oxen used to plow. And learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. So we are in his yoke, and that's why our plowing can be productive. We find success in his strength. 
he is supplying what is needed for us to be profitable in plowing and um, this labor. <coughs> now, I wanted to consider plowing in the word, plowing in the word of the truth, the scriptures, thinking about these things. It's like the part of plowing that I mentioned before that's unearthing things that are below the surface. Working for what is not easily accessible is included with this. It's like breaking the truth open to find what's hidden by those who would just pass by. Uh -huh. Those who will stay and invest themselves will find the treasure that's buried in the field. But they had to spend time there to plow and to unearth these things that were below the surface. So we don't want to read scriptures as kind of skimming over the top because you'll miss a lot. But whenever you're reading the scriptures and something stands out to you, it's like some, some field that's ripe for you to stay there in that area. You want to set up in that certain place and you want to plow more in that area so you can unearth the things that are below the surface because the Lord has riches that are below the surface that are hidden away from those that don't have a desire for them. But those who will stay and plow will be able to bring up what lies deeper. The Lord also gave a prophecy um, to Amos, the prophet, in Amos 9, 13. He says, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that the plowman shall overtake the reaper and the treader of grapes him that soweth seed. Now this, you know that the idea of plowing and harvest, there's a time difference. You plow at one set time and then the harvest comes at a different later time after the fruit has had time to mature. But the Lord's saying, I'm going to bring about a day that these things are going to be happening at the same time. That the plowman is going to be reaping and he's going to be preparing the field for the next crop as the other ones are being um, gathered in from the harvest. So this is what we're looking at. This, this a shadow of things in the word. Whenever we are plowing in the word, we're also able to gather fruit. Whenever we plow down deep, that is whenever we're going to gather those fruits. I thought about several plants that grow underneath the surface, peanuts and sweet potatoes, and you probably all know those things, but as you dig down deep, you find those fruits. So the Lord has set it up for us in such a way that when we plow, we can immediately partake of the fruits of those labors of plowing. So tonight, I wanted to remind us again, we're not alone in this labor of plowing. I've already mentioned being in the, in the yoke of the Lord, but he's called every one of the brethren into that yoke also. So we have the, the joint effort of all of the brethren here tonight to plow together in the word of God. So we have a lot of help tonight to be able to unearth some of the things that we're going to have brought to us in the ministry tonight, the scriptures and in the truth. So it's our desire tonight to plow together because we know when we do this, we'll also be able to partake of the fruits together. So we'll enter into that labor tonight. We'll open with a word of prayer. <clears throat>